What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another video. Today, we're talking about four things that will ruin your builds, okay? So, just a quick review, I wanted to touch on these. This is more for me than it is for you because you guys know that I'm doing a solo hardcore barb challenge uh, where we're trying to get from 0 to 100 uh, world first as a soloist and it's going to be tough. So, I kind of want to use these for a refresher to keep myself in check and obviously hopefully help you guys along the way. So, as I'm going through this challenge, these are four things that I'm going to be... Uh, keeping in the corner of my mind. I even wrote this down in my handy dandy notebook. First thing is not understanding damage. All right. Um, I think this is a critical mistake. Um, in the beginning, when I first started playing Diablo 4, I had thought that it worked like any other game where you just figure out what the primary stat is of your character. You just get a bunch of that and then you just, you know, press buttons, right? Um, however, uh, with this game, you guys may have seen other videos where they talk about damage buckets or my video where I talked about baking a cake. <laughs> um, but with this, there's a lot of different forms. Uh, the basics of it is the more variations of damage that you add to your character that all add up to the same thing, the more damage output you are going to deal. Now, the reason why this is important is because as the world ramps up, especially as I start getting into tier two and tier three, uh, the monsters are going to scale quite a bit more heavily uh, against me. Uh, it's a situation where in hardcore, if I level up too quickly and I don't have the gear, I could get trounced, right? Which is why a lot of people are running world tier one as a as an early game strategy to kind of avoid that or circumvent that. But I need to make sure that I'm ready by world tier three. And how I do that is making sure that I have as many situations or variations that combine together to give me the most damage output. So for example, I'll be using Berserk and Bleed mostly for my bar build. And then I wanna make sure that I'm keeping vulnerable stacks up pretty much permanently on the enemy and maintaining my Berserk status for the 25% damage increase. Then I'm also looking for gear and armor that are adding any types of variables uh, while I'm berserking more damage, while the enemies are vulnerable, um, while I'm using a two-handed weapon, while I'm using a slashing weapon, so on and so forth. And as I do that, that's going to allow me to ramp my damage up. I'm going to do the same thing on the damage reduction side. So less damage while the enemy is vulnerable, less damage while the enemy is bleeding, less damage while I'm close, less damage while, you know, whatever. You guys get the idea. Um, but that's going to be a core focus for me. Now, the next thing here is not understanding status effects. This is a huge, huge, huge one. Um, the reason why is because if you don't understand status effects, and you guys will be able to uh, see a link to that video where I explain all status effects at the end of this video, but status effects have a huge impact on your overall build as a character. So, for example, Berserk is a status effect. It's a positive one, right? It increases my damage by 25%, and it also increases my movement speed by 30%. So understanding that, I know how to centralize a build around that specific strategy. If I wasn't aware of that, and I thought Berserk just made my hands turn red, which is what I thought at some point, I would have just completely ignored Berserk as an option to uh, give myself, to give my character more efficiency. Now on the flip side of that, understanding negative effects, especially effects like bleed and how it scales with physical damage. So if you guys are trying to maximize a bleed build, you guys want to get as much physical damage as you can or if you guys are trying to play off of vulnerable, vulnerable essentially increases the amount of damage that an enemy receives by 20% because you're lowering their defense by 20%. Or understanding what freeze, slow, daze, and various effects applied to your enemies can create opportunities and advantages for you where you otherwise would have gotten destroyed. This is really, really key in my progression just for my hardcore character because I have to keep in mind what's happening, especially when I get into harder difficulties where I can die literally at any time if I'm not paying attention. Now, the next thing is going to tie in. This is going to be really important. You guys may have seen me talk about this in my Don't Fuck This Up video. Because um, in that video, I talked about a lot of players potentially missing the rep rewards because they're just focused on rushing and they might not realize it. Um, I know a lot of people I've seen in the comments, they're like, what? How could you miss this? But like, trust me, players are going to miss this because... We're going to be so focused on rushing that, you know, we were like, oh, how did I get an extra potion? And then by the time you figure it out, you're already, you know, in game level 50, like, damn, I got to go back and do all this. So the big thing here and the reason why this is important is because 
especially early on like if i can get away with popping into world tier one and knocking a lot of these out to get those extra talent points those extra stat points those are going to be huge for me in my overall progression as a hardcore character um these are some key things that i need especially as a barbarian just because like the deck is kind of stacked against me i have to be up close and personal to literally every enemy that i'm fighting outside of you know the minimal aoe abilities that i have whirlwind um you know upheaval you know things of that nature hammer of the ancients if i happen to get the you know legendary aspect um but since i'm limited in aoe this increases my chances that i could die essentially at any time so i want to make sure that i'm going through and i'm completing these regional quest rewards so i can get the extra talent points as a total of 20 paragon points 10 skill points and uh five potion uses which is going to be extremely important in keeping my character alive so again, um, this is huge and we're reviewing these because these are things that I constantly need to be thinking about as I go through this, uh, because practically if I die at all, you know, depending on what level I make it to, um, I could essentially lose my position or challenge. So I have to stay alive, especially trying to do this on the first try. And last but not least, guys, and this is probably the most important is really just understanding your skills. Um, if you don't understand how your skills work or how they play in or different variables that they play off of, um, you, your character is pretty much null and void. Uh, the crazy thing about this game is that there's a lot of complexity in the in the simplicity of it, right? So even though your abilities may sound very simple, simple adjustments that are made to your build because of the skill that you've chosen literally can change the entire dynamic of your builds. So this one, I saved it, I wanted to save this one for last because it's the most important when trying to figure out everything else that goes into this. So understanding your damage, understanding your status effects based off of the skills that you're using. So for example, I know that if I use upheaval, uh, there's a way that I can spec it to where I gain berserk, but then understanding my status effects, I know that my berserk is gonna last for five seconds. So within that five second window, I have to make sure that A, I keep my berserk up so I can keep the bonuses, B, apply vulnerability to reduce the enemy um, defense, right? If I have effects up that decrease the amount of damage that an enemy deals to me while vulnerable, this is also going to increase the amount of uptime that I have as a character, my ability to stay alive. So you guys can see how important this is, how all of these facets play into each other. And when you bring them together, it creates a class that is a lot more formidable than you would otherwise be if you ignored any one of these facets. So I wanted to take some time and talk about these, especially since we're so close to launch. Um, please, like, remember these, remember these steps, take a note in your mind, especially even more so if you guys are competing for hardcore. But even if you guys are playing a normal, understanding these key concepts can really, really help you fine tune your build. So anyway, guys, that's all I wanted to cover today. If you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, definitely let me know in the comment box below and I'll be happy to assist. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.